Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of September, for people living on the margins. We pray for those persons living on the margins of society in inhumane life conditions. May they not be overlooked by institutions and never considered of lesser importance. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we begin this day with the Lord, we ask Him to help us in all our endures. As we begin this day in His presence, we ask Him to bless us so that every step, every activity may radiate His presence, His joy and His love to the world. And therefore we see that sometimes in life we do not acknowledge or we do not thank the Lord sufficiently for all the graces that we have received. If you take a look at our lives, we see that we may have received plenty of graces, but we very rarely thank the Lord for them. And therefore, it would be adequate for us to begin today's day by thanking the Lord, thanking Him for all the little things, for all the graces that He has given in our lives. These things, which may seem little, go a long way in His plan for us. Everything that happens, happens because He wills it and because He has it planned in our lives. And therefore, we begin by thanking the Lord for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for the various talents, abilities that you have given us. We thank you for making us different, unique. Lord, we also thank you for the gift of this day, a day that will help us to make a difference not only in our lives but also in the lives of others, a day which may help us to complete something that was left incomplete or to do something in a different manner. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones and all those who play a very important role in our lives. All these individuals have indeed helped us in various ways. They have molded us and made us who we are. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that you shower your abundant blessings on them and help them in all their endeavors. 
Lord, we also thank you for all the opportunities that you have given us. Opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others or opportunities in order to showcase your gifts and thus help for the common good. Lord, we also thank you for the experiences that you have given us. There may be many experiences which are very happy, joyful experiences which we always want to treasure. But there also may be those experiences which may have been tough, difficult. Nonetheless, these have been learning experiences because these experiences have helped us learn a lot in life. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us these experiences, for helping us become stronger individuals. And Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you may give us all the graces that are necessary so that we may understand your plan in our lives and that we may be able to put into practice all the teachings, all the values that you have taught us. And now, my dear friends, let us reflect and meditate on Psalm 56. Now, as usual, we shall take a look at an overview of the psalm and then we shall go into the details of the psalm. Now we see that Psalm 56 generally is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David and it is believed to have been written during a time when David was in distress and he was facing opposition from his enemies. Now the psalm can be divided into three main sections. The first basically includes a plea for God's mercy and protection and this is something a theme that we will find in verses 1 to 4. Then as we move to verses 5 to 7, we see that there is a kind of a description of the actions and the intentions of David's enemies. And finally, in verses 8 to 13, we see a declaration of trust and praise in God. And therefore, in a way, we can see that this psalm also would help us, especially in times of our difficulties, when we face a lot of challenges in life. Now, overall, we see that Psalm 56 will showcase David's plea for God's mercy and protection in the face of opposition. This psalm also highlights the trust that David had in God's faithfulness and power despite the actions of his enemies. Now the psalm also encourages us to trust in God's deliverance and also it emphasizes the importance of praising and honoring God. This psalm in a very particular manner serves as a reminder that even in difficult moments, even in times of distress, God is a reliable source of refuge and strength. And having seen the overview of the psalm, let us go into the first section, that is verses 1 to 4. And here we see that in this first section of the psalm, David pleads for God's mercy and protection. We see that David acknowledges his vulnerability and he expresses his trust in God to deliver him. Now in verses 1 to 2, David asks God, to be merciful to him and to take note of his distress. And therefore, when we are also faced with problems in life, we can always turn to the Lord who is ever willing to help us. In verses 3 to 4, we see that David describes his enemies and their actions. And here we see that he acknowledges that they are constantly opposing him and causing him a lot of trouble. However, we see that David also affirms his trust in God and declares that he will not be afraid. Now, when we move to the second section of the psalm, we see that this section will plainly focus on the actions and the intentions of David's enemies. Now, David describes their malicious intentions and their attempts to harm him. 
And therefore, in verses 5 to 6, we see that he highlights their twisted words and schemes. He portrays their schemes and actions as an attempt to trap him and to bring him down. But despite the enemy's schemes, despite the efforts of the enemies, we see that David remains resolute and expresses confidence that God will ultimately hold them accountable. And therefore, in our lives too, we may find ourselves in situations where we feel that nothing is happening. And it is in these moments where we actually need to place our faith and trust in the Lord. And therefore, David in this psalm gives us a perfect example of that. Now, the third section of this psalm shifts to a declaration of trust and praise in God. Now, here we see that David will express his faith in God's promises and he declares his unwavering trust in him. Now, in verses 8 to 9, we see that David affirms his belief that God is aware of his suffering and that he collects his tears. David also asserts his confidence that God is on his side and ultimately God will deliver him from his enemies. And therefore, as we read verses 10 to 11 of the psalm, we see that David declares his trust in God's word and his power and therefore stating that he will not fear what mere mortals may do to him. He recognizes that his deliverance is ultimately in the hands of God. And therefore, we see that the psalm will conclude in verses 12 to 13, where David expresses his gratitude and he vows to fulfill uh, to God what he has promised. And therefore, he acknowledges that God has rescued him from death and therefore God has preserved his life and he commits to praising God and walking in his presence. My dear friends, as we have reflected on the psalm, let us now close eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and he has given us new life. Lord, as you have given us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and to protect us. And therefore, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given us, all the graces that you have bestowed on us, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. You have protected us all through the night, and you have given us the gift of this day. You have given us good health of mind and body. And therefore, Lord, at this morning hour, we thank you and we praise you. For your great love and mercy, O Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. You are a merciful God. You are always there to watch over us at every step of the way. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that whatever actions we may do today, whatever steps we may take, be with us, guide us all along the way, so that whatever we may do, it may be according to your will, according to your plan, and ultimately that you may lead us to fulfill your mission. And therefore, as we reflect and meditate on the psalm, let us now spend a few moments in silence and let us take a look at what touched us as we read the psalm. There may be a sentence or there may be a phrase. Let us remain with it, asking the Lord to give us the grace so that we too may be able to become like him, to become a light to the world and therefore spread his message of love and peace.
pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude pray for souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.